welcome. Today is a presentation where we're going to look at a special type of condition that is actually found in orthopedic surgery, uh, which is osteomyelitis. Okay. <clears throat> so when you look at the word osteomyelitis, we have three words there. We have osteomyelo and itis. So what do we initially mean? Osteo, it refers to the bone. Milo, it refers to the bone marrow, and itis, it simply means inflammation. So now, how can we define, how can we say osteomyelitis is? So in simple word, we can say osteomyelitis, so in saying that in definition, we can say osteomyelitis as the inflammation, inflammation of the bone, okay, of the bone, and bone marrow okay you know that uh, inflammation will actually occur as a result of infection okay so inflammation of the bone and bone marrow caused by uh, uh, by microorganisms you know that microorganisms are the ones that are actually going to cause eh? infections caused by microorganisms, okay? Characterized by pain and fever, etc. So we are saying that Osteomyelitis, it is the inflammation of the bone and bone marrow caused by microorganisms, okay? Then what are the clinical pictures that you are going to see? Of course, yes, there will be fever and pain as well as other clinical features. So now, looking at the definition, away from the definition, what do you think are the causes of osteomyelitis? What causes osteomyelitis? So now, osteomyelitis usually affects children, okay? Osteomyelitis, it usually affects children, and when it occurs in adults, the bones that are actually affected are the vertebrae bones, and in children, the bones that are affected are the long bones, and this condition, it is mostly found in children. So now, what are the causative organisms? What are the organisms or the agent that causes osteomyelitis? So, the causes or the causative agent or organisms so uh, I've written microorganisms but osteomyelitis it is mostly mostly caused by bacteria okay so this causative agent for osteomyelitis they have been, they have been grouped into two we have uh, biogenic causes okay so we have uh, biogenic Biogenic uh, causes, okay, and non-biogenic. So the bacteria that actually causes osteomyelitis, they have been grouped into two, where we have biogenic and non-biogenic. So under biogenic causes, when you hear the word biogenic, these are pus-forming bacteria, pus-forming bacteria. So under biogenic causes, the most commonest cause of osteomyelitis is staphylococcus, staphylococcus, okay, aureus. This is the most commonest cause of uh, biogenic osteomyelitis, okay. Then we also have uh, the patients who actually have sexually transmitted infection that is caused by Neisseria gonorrhea. They also develop osteomyelitis because that Neisseria gonorrhea can enter the bloodstream and infect the bone. Okay, so we have also have the Neisseria gonorrhea. Okay, then we also have uh, Salmonella. Salmonella it will actually occur because these patients who have got uh, the patients who have sickle cell disease, they are susceptible to infection of salmonella. That's how they have osteomyelitis. You know that the salmonella can get into the bloodstream and reach the bone and result in osteomyelitis. We also have E. coli. Okay? Then, so these are 
pyogenic causes. We also have some other causes, but for now, just know that Staphylococcus aureus, about 90%, it is the most commonest cause of osteomyelitis. Okay? Then, what about under non pyogenic? So, when you hear the word non pyogenic, these are. Uh, these are bacteria that are non-forming pus bacteria. Non-forming pus bacteria. So under non-pyogenic causes, the most commonest cause of osteomyelitis is myco, mycobacterium, mycobacterium tuberculosis. Okay. So this is the most this is the most common cause of osteomyelitis and non-pyogenic uh, and non-pyogenic causes. So now looking at the cause of osteomyelitis, we are saying that how do these bacteria reach the bone and cause osteomyelitis? Okay? How does these bacteria, how does the mycobacterium tuberculosis, the staphylococcus aureus, how do they reach the bone and cause osteomyelitis? When you look at the bone, okay? When you look at the bone, for example, let me draw the bone. This is the long bone. Uh, if we say uh, this is the bone. How do bacteria actually reach the bone and cause osteomyelitis? This bone, it is actually has a protective membrane which we are calling as the periosteum. We also have got the muscles. We also have the soft tissue. We also have the skin. How do the, how does the bacteria reach the bone and cause osteomyelitis? So our next heading from the causative organism, we are going to talk about the route of transmission or the route of entry. So here, we'll talk about the route of entry, okay? Route of entry. So under the route of entry, we're saying, how does bacteria enter the bone and cause osteomyelitis? So the most commonest route, the most commonest route is hemato, hematogenous spread okay or hematogenous root uh, hematogenous root we are simply talking about the uh, the circulation is that the bacteria can enter the the circulation the systemic circulation and you know that the bone it is actually supplied by blood and it has got some blood vessels so we are saying that the bacteria can enter the the artery that supplies the bone and reach there and cause it osteomyelitis so that is hematogenous spread then the other the other route or mode of entry it is direct inoculation direct inoculation of microbes okay microbes just simply means microorganisms okay direct inoculation of microbes so what do we mean under direct inoculation is that sometimes a patient can have trauma, okay? Sometimes under this, a patient can have trauma. And let's take, for instance, if a patient has, has sustained an open fracture, okay? The patient is involved in a road traffic accident and they have sustained a, an open fracture. Is that that open fracture, it's going to communicate to the external environment, and if it communicates with the external environment, meaning that it will give room for the bacteria to enter and cause osteomyelitis. Then the other way under direct inoculation is that during surgery, okay? So during surgery, we are saying that when the orthopedic surgeons, they are operating the patient, they are doing the internal implant, they are, and they are not following a septic technique, they can introduce infection in the bone and cause osteomyelitis. Then the other route or mode of transmission, it is contiguous, okay? Contiguous spread. This one we can also say direct extension of neighboring soft tissue infection, okay? Direct extension of neighboring soft tissue infection. So under contiguous spread, we are saying that the bacteria 
For example, if someone has got a skin infection such as cellulitis, this skin infection it can actually uh, it can spread. Okay, it can spread from the skin, invade the soft tissue, and uh, reach the bone and cause osteomyelitis. Okay, so remember that the first thing that we talked about was the definition where we say that. Uh, Osteomyelitis, just the inflammation of the bone and bone marrow caused by infection, okay? Then we also talked about the causative organisms, where we said they are classified into two, where we have biogenic causes and non-biogenic causes. Then under biogenic causes, we said that these are pus-forming bacteria, and the most commonest bacteria that causes osteomyelitis, it is Staphylococcus aureus under biogenic causes. Then the patient who have got a sexually transmitted infection, they actually have osteomyelitis second uh, as a result of infection of the Neisseria gonorrhea. Then we also have the patient who have got sickle cell disease. They are susceptible to salmonella, and that infection can actually enter the bloodstream and cause osteomyelitis. Then E. coli as well it causes. Then under non-biogenic causes, the most commonest cause it is mycobacterium tuberculosis. Okay. Then from there we also discuss to say that uh, in adults the bones that are actually affected are the vertebrae, and in children the bones that are affected are the long bones. Okay. The root of trans or the root of transmission or root of entry. How does this organism? reach the bone and cause osteomyelitis. This is where we talked about the root of entry. And the most commonest root that we said, it is the hematogenous spread, where the bacteria is going to enter the bloodstream uh, and reach the bone and result in osteomyelitis. Then we also said that you have direct inoculation of microbes, where we said sometimes microorganisms that are directly implanted inside the bone and result in osteomyelitis. For example, if a patient has got if a patient has sustained an open fracture, that open fracture is going to communicate with the external environment, which has got a lot of bacteria, and that is going to make it very easy for the bacteria to enter in the bone and result in osteomyelitis. Then we also said uh, under direct inoculation. During surgery, if the surgeons they are not following a septic technique, they can actually introduce microorganism and result in osteomyelitis. Then we also said about the last one, which was contiguous spread. Contiguous spread is just a spread where you have a skin infection, e.g. cellulitis. This can actually reach the bone and result in osteomyelitis. So in the next presentation, we are going to talk about... Uh, the structure of the bone as well as the pathophysiology is that how does actually one have osteomyelitis when the infection enters the, the bloodstream or when it enters the artery? How do you result? Or how does it cause osteomyelitis? So next, watch the next uh, uh, presentation that we will we'll be talking about the, uh, the structure of the bone as well as the pathophysiology of osteomyelitis. Thank you.